Hello everybody, Phantoms Y here, with some more G Senjo no Mao. So, last time we left off, Kyosuke had just agreed to sign up for a cell phone plan with Asami, and then suddenly his cell phone rang, and I guess she's calling him. I don't know. I don't know what's going on anymore. But uh, regardless, Hiroaki has still not come home. We should be on Tsubaki's route now. But, um, yeah, we got to see if, uh, if Mao keeps his word and returns Hiroaki. There's all kinds of things going on in the background. So let's continue. あ、仕事。はあ。自分携帯電話とか持つの初めてでして。あ、なんだか she's not calling you for anything stupid. This girl is so annoying. And that's it. <laughs> Tsubaki Vision! She lied again. The feeling that she was betraying her family and friends was positively suffocating. So I'm guessing this is all part of Mao's uh, plan. You recall back when uh, Tsubaki was acting so goody-goody at one point, I, I remember Mao saying to her, I'll mold you into a human. So, you know, I think part of this is just him having, you know, just a bit of evil fun manipulating Tsubaki and uh, and having her suspect and just basically, as he would say, become human. The kidnapper, Mao, had given Tsubaki a single order last night. As expected. In other words, she questioned the relationship between Haru and Mao, and the reason behind Haru's refusal to deliver the ransom. Mao suddenly asked, Tsubaki went speechless. Mao stirred a bit behind Tsubaki. Tsubaki thought back to her question, uh, conversa yeah, the conversation at school this morning. Tsubaki's attention dropped her, uh, the hands on her knees. Mao teased Tsubaki. Shikashi, Usami ga kouku wa nai no ka? Kouai? Watashi no yona hiretsuna kyouaku han to shiriai na no da zo. A gulp escaped her throat. She knew he had hit the mark. That was a suspicion that had been bugging her since dusk. Yet, fear was not the thing she felt. Haru was exhausted from trying to help Tsubaki. Though the ransom was still taken in the end, she still clearly felt how to his eff effort. There was no reason behind it. Tsubaki trusted Haru by instinct. Tsubaki, ヒトを疑わないというのは相手を軽んじているのも同じだぞ。なぜですか？相手に深い興味を持てば疑うものなのだ。お前は人を疑わないことで人間関係の煩わしさから逃げているに過ぎない。Trepidation grew inside Tsubaki. How could this man behind her say such piercing things? Things capable of penetrating her very soul? Mao's tone deepened again. <laughs> Mao continued with a cold voice. Speechlessness, discomfort, an alarm rang in her mind, warning her that she could not continue listening to this, a madman's soft whispers. <laughs> 
She gave her all to change the course of the conversation. When she thought of Hiroaki, the forthcoming anger pushed away all her, uh, her confusion. Tsubaki shook her head. For a moment, she had sympathy for the kidnapper. She gathered up her courage and answered Mao. There you go, Tsubaki. She flung out those words, but it was not what she was thinking. Though she really didn't plan on calling the police, she still held hopes that Haru would catch the kidnapper. Come to think of it, she really was non-committal. As if he'd already known her thoughts, Mao said, There was an urge in her right now to ignore the consequences to turn around. This one sentence eased the tension of Tsubaki's mind. She sighed in relief, forming a white haze in the cold air. She held back tears. Hope flooded her heart, and she felt refreshed now that her predominant concern had been sorted out. She wanted to answer, but she couldn't choke out a voice. I want to see him. The devil sneered. His voice carried with it a tempting invitation. An invitation that was impossible to refuse. Tsubaki tasted a strange, perverted sense that he was directing her to the borders of hell. However, that awkward feeling only lasted for but a moment. The thick clouds covering the approaching November night sky uh, covered the... Yeah, let me try that again. The thick clouds covered the approaching November night sky, introducing an endless darkness. Can't read sometimes, you know. Illiteracy taking hold. <clears throat> I woke up in the morning, had a cup of milk, and read the papers. Police, yeah, police in initiate a thorough investigation of the Chugaya Saki school. <laughs> I understood the moment I saw the headlines. Someone was suspected of accepting bribes. Apparently, there were some under the table deals between the school's director and the contractors working on the school expansion project. So that's why the school's stock is going to plummet. Shiratori. That girl's family may be facing a crisis. Oh well. It has nothing to do with me. Ah, oh, yeah. Pretty big, huh? Oh, is that what you were talking about? In retrospect, Aichi would never bother to read an article about the Shiratori Construction Company. I There was no the, so I just molded the sentence. Regardless of the school's financial situation, our daily lives will go on unaffected. Tsubaki didn't look very well as she greeted me. <laughs> She's obviously hiding something. 
You don't have to force yourself to come to school. You really are strong, Tsubaki. Tsubaki shook her head. Don't say that when you know jack shit about what she feels. Color returned to Tsubaki's face as we continued our banter. On our way back to the classroom, Tsubaki and I ran into Shiratori. Hey. Shiratori didn't even look at me. There seems to be quite a fiasco. I read the news. Shiratori crossed her arms when I brought up the subject. Looks like Tsubaki doesn't know about this. <coughs> she spoke as if it didn't concern her. Mizuha walked uh, towards the classroom. Tsubaki suddenly grabbed at Mizuha's arms. Tsubaki's grip loosened, and Shiratori entered the classroom. Her eyes turned to me in search of help. To put it simply, Shiratori's father was giving preferential, eh, preferential treatment to particular contractors during the bidding for the school's expansion product. Well, if that's what uh, that's what the papers say, if that's what the papers say, then it must be true. Man, I'm just about to give up. Tsubaki's face was enveloped by a quiet darkness. Also, the Shiratori construction shares your uh, family bought it dropped in a lot in value. In other words, the shares the kidnapper took are worth practically nothing. I was trying to imply that this was really bad news for Tsubaki's family. Even if they got the shares back, the 50 million yen would never return. Nevertheless, Tsubaki was only worrying about Shiratori. Huh? You're one to talk. As far as I can tell, you're in a much worse situation. I just don't understand how you find the time to worry about others. That's exactly what I'm talking about. We entered the classroom. Lunch break rolled around. I went to the rooftop and called Miki-chan. I was stopped when I was just about to buy myself some bread. About Hiroaki? You found something? Usami had stayed over at Tsubaki's house after we parted ways. Shortly thereafter, Kanan and Aichi also arrived at the rooftop. I understand. How's the classroom? So, did you find any clues? What did you find then? A photograph? Oh, right. The one sent back with the hair. I'd only paid attention to the hair at the time. What was the, uh, it a picture of? Well, I guess it'd be a picture of Hiroaki. Usami nodded. You found hints in the photo? Usami shook her head after a slight hesitation. <coughs> I 
Give me the details. I haven't seen the picture. First, what was his facial expression? Expression. So he was lying on the floor or something? What time of day was it? So the place he's at is being kept very dark then. Well, why do you think it's an abandoned house? こいしやガラス園が散乱していました。さらに顔のそばに倒れた書棚のようなものが見えました。あ、シェルフ。はい。書類のようなものが散乱していました。あ、なあ。You'd his face? I see. Oh, I see where you're going. It's winter now. The only possible explanation for this abnormal mosquito population is that he's being kept on a remote abandoned uh, in a remote abandoned area. Not bad. It's a step in the right direction, at least. Right. Everything that could be easily seen by neighbors if the uh, place was in a residential area. The kidnapper would try to avoid situations where he'd be spotted by local grandmas while dealing with the hostage. Ah, I know what you want to say. I sighed. So now what? Are you inviting me on some Hardy Boys adventure to explore some ruins with you? She appears to have found what I said to be quite lame. Give me a break. Are you serious? Do you have any idea how many places fit that description in this city alone? Well, I don't know exactly, but there should at least be 50. This isn't something to ho ho over. If we couldn't find him, uh, even if we allotted a month, then I couldn't continue. Don't just come out and say it so easily. Sami spoke softly. Come to think of it, it's the reason that you're so adamant in believing he won't return the hostage because he sent that photograph? Usami nodded. But if his only objective was to prove this, he could have just let Hiroaki speak on the telephone. Hiroaki is in a state where he can no longer even use a phone. Right. Where the photo was taken isn't necessarily where Hiroaki is being kept. But... There are over 50 places in Toman Betsu City alone. I frowned as Usami straightened up. What's with the sudden display of confidence? Likelihood? Setting mountains aside, are, uh, aren't pretty much all abandoned sites no places with no people around? Yeah, Azai-san. 
可能性の話で言えば賃相談やホームレスの方も近づかないようなレアな廃墟なんじゃないでしょうか Yeah, I guess you're right If I was the kidnapper, I would choose one of those places too I'm not too familiar with the subject myself But I hear it's pretty common for gangs to use those abandoned ruins as meeting spots And the homeless to use them as homes 1日2件3日もあれば、ヒロアキ君を発見する確率は 10% 以上になります道端で突然ペンギンと出くわすより高い確率です当たり前の話ですの I never knew you were so optimistic. とにかく探してみます。Very well. I just didn't feel like arguing anymore. じゃあ、早速リストアップしてもらっていいですかね ?A list with information about nearby condemned sites? 無理すかね神だ。God! Oh, you're talking about that thing with a g and me. Information on condemned sites, huh? How would I gather that? Some research on the internet and in books would be the best way to start off. I guess I could also ask some former gang members from the Azai Corporation's network. Anyway, I'm going home. Eh? Tsubaki showed up just as I was revealing my disgust. Yeah, I was just having a little talk with Usami. Tsubaki took a glimpse at Usami, looking rather stiff. No, wait. I don't want to let any classmates into my room. Let alone Usami. Promise. Ah, the promise to search for Hiroaki. And I, I assume that right now Tsubaki is greatly misunderstanding things. You're laying it on thick there, Usami. You're really annoying, you know that? I stretch my, uh, scratch my head, rather. As I sat there vexed, someone called out from the hallway. Uh oh. It was Miss Noriko. She seems to be in a panic. Tsubaki called back and headed for the door. Miss Noriko's face was deathly white as she spoke to Tsubaki. Tsubaki returned after a while. Tsubaki had a frightened look about her. What happened? One sec. Sorry about that. Can I shake this cold? Now that I think about it, she hasn't been well lately. She's been in bed ever since the kidnapping. Which hospital? I try to remain calm. Judging by the name of the hospital Tsubaki told me, it was a general hospital in the Eastern District. Alright, take a taxi there. I'll, uh, it'll get you there in no time. Taxi? I'll call one for you now, and I'll lend you the money. It shouldn't be more than 5,000 yen. Don't worry about it. It's an emergency, right? I took a 5,000 yen bill from my wallet and handed it to Tsubaki. I picked up my cell to call the cab company, too. This call, uh, the call was already over by the time Tsubaki had a chance to resist again. He said I'll be here in five minutes. Go wait in front of the school. I've already told him the destination. What's the matter? You look like you want to cry. Tsubaki held the 5,000 yen bill tightly in her hands and dashed out of the classroom. Watching her turn around the corner, Usami whispered, It's because I'm rich. No, really, it's normal, isn't it? 
Is she misunderstanding me? My business with Sano uh, Corporation is only possible because of Tsubaki. I have to repay this favor. Of course, but can you come to my house tomorrow instead? I get the feeling I'm being led around by the nose here. Very well, but you have to leave as soon as you have what you want. I still have plans for the night. The bell signals the end of lunch break. Oh well. This could be a chance to investigate the connection between Usami and Mao. Yay! Usami was impressed looking up at the building. Not me, my dad. He's the rich one. I inserted the key into the auto locking door and opened it. What's wrong with that? <laughs> You're quite annoying. We entered the elevator after moving through the lobby. First things first, don't touch anything here. You disgusting woman. Something like 1600. Don't go nosing around. Sit your butt over there and don't move. Sami looked around the house excitedly. Would coffee do? Sami pointed to the safe that holds 50 million yen. Eh, just a little. I get a small allowance working for my dad. Why do you say that? I continued the question. Doesn't it seem strange that someone living in a huge expansi uh, expensive apartment like this would be saving up money? <coughs> she turned her attention to the furniture as she spoke. You know your furniture pretty well. It's true. And it's not only the furniture. The dinnerware and appliances are all cheap stuff too. It's all stuff I bought cheap from the Soa Alliance's pawn shop. A lot of them were gifts too. Yeah, the parking garage is underground. Well, it's just a company car. Somehow I knew you would start to analyze my personality the second you stepped in that door. <sighs> Still, most of what Usami said was correct. I lead a life that uh, appears luxurious. Gonzo's orders, after all. I would personally rather save money. I still have to return the 200 million yen debt that my father owes. Nevertheless, appearances are crucial. The right house, the right car, the right clothes. I might only be his adopted son, but as a child of the fourth leader of the uh, Sono Yama group, I just can't let others look. I can't just let others look down on me. I know better than to do that. Gonzo has shown me firsthand the power one can obtain by flaunting one's wealth. Wristwatches, cars, a few extra square feet. In the underground, these things are closely tied to your over overall worth as a person. Ah, I think I'd probably better eat better food than you at least. So <laughs> And go rummage through the garbage, you saw me. I buy CDs and take Tsubaki out for coffee, too. I do a lot of stuff that wastes money. Yep, he's not frugal. Not at all. Sami lowered her head slightly. 
浅井さんは何か事情があってお金を稼ぎまくっている好青年かと思いましたよ。Don't be silly. <laughs> you mean one of those guys that lives in a tiny room, uses the public bath and toilet, and leads a frugal lifestyle all for the sake of, of being able to pay off his some sick mother's debt? What a ridiculous thought. Forget about one hundred. Uh, one or two hundred thousand. How could someone say,、uh, saving up such piddly amounts by living like that, possibly repay a hundred million yen debt? If you don't use money, you won't earn money. I've been repeating this to myself. I must repay all of my debts. Still, I refuse to live a poor life. Otherwise, people who think they know the first thing about me will look, down, look upon me with pity. I never want to experience that kind of humiliation ever again. So, t h e n i s kid. Yeah, I'll get to researching in my study. So, Jibun. You wait here. Eh? So, Jibun, what are you doing? I'm going to search for you. I'm going to search for you. I'm going to search for you. I'll be in charge of searching on the internet for information on local,、uh, rundown locales and printing it out. You read it, and I'll look for further information while you're reading. I just wanted Usami to stay out of my study. There are lots of things on my computer that simply cannot be seen. I left Usami there and entered the study by myself. One sec. Alright, sorry about that. We met in the living room after an hour had passed. The sun was already setting before we knew it. It seems like there are lots of rundown spots. Not only were there a lot of condemned homes that nobody lived in, but there were a lot of ruined parks and hotels. There were even some old military facilities. Usami surfed through the information that I'd printed out. <laughs> I bet that's why it's closed. And look at this rental house. It might be condemned, but it's in the center of town. We'd be hard pressed to believe that the kidnapper was、uh, hiding the hostage in an abandoned building that people pass by all the time. What now? Ah, right. I nearly forgot. Someone owns it, even if it's condemned. It's against the law to enter without permission. Um. Well, we won't know until we ask. How can we ask these people in a way that will guarantee their consent? A five year old might be trapped in there. That'd be just peachy, but there's no way we can say that. Alright, just wait a moment. I need to ask an acquaintance of mine in real estate about something. I took the list Usami had arranged back to my study. The inner workings of the real estate business is quite something. When I said I was with the Azai Corporation and asked the real estate agent about the buildings, he called his co worker and identified the owners almost immediately. Well, I dealt with the five locations,、uh, with five locations to start with. No worries, they all agreed to let us in. Yeah, the truth was we didn't get permission at all. All five of them belonged to a local financial institution. Getting permission was out of the question. Yeah, they said it's not a problem, seeing as how I'm my father's son. So, this is what I'm doing. We're in search of a five year old for the greater good here. I do feel a little bad about it, but what if Sami doesn't know won't hurt her? What? We're starting now? Wait, let's pack some things first. As I got deeper into research, I started to, started to see how unsafe these condemned sites are. And flashlights. It's pretty dark in these places, even at noon. 
以前工事現場でアルバイトしていたことがありましてその時に意識揃えたんです She really does all kinds of jobs. それじゃあ資料とかをお借りしていきますアゼイさんは来られないんですよねあ、sorry There's something I need to do today Isn't she afraid going alone? The photos of ruined buildings Every last one of them looks frightening There might not be ghosts But there could be vagrants or packs of wild dogs I'll find some time and do some more thorough research on condemned sites in the city. I'll ask my dad about it too. Arigato gozaimasu. Sami waved and head for the, headed for the door. <clears throat> ah, wait a moment. Usami turned and moved、uh, her head to the side in uncertainty. I have a question. <clears throat> you insist the kidnapper is Mao, right? <clears throat> What do you think Mao's motive for kidnapping? Is for kidnapping Tsubaki's brother. You know that the goal of the kidnapper wasn't money, right? Yasami nodded again and said, Hypothesis? Huh? I frowned. もしくは魔王は魔王にとって私がどの程度の脅威になりうるかを試してきたんです。Aren't you being a little too self-centered? That sounds bonkers. 自分でも変態なことを言っているのは分かっ I joked. What are you trying to say that you and Mao are arch nemesis? いやいや、魔王にとって自分なんかミジンコみたいなもんですよ。いや、ミジンコは言い過ぎか。ゴキブリみたいなもんか。<laughs> What the hell is her problem? Well, then, why would a vicious kidnapper like Mao want to go after a plankton like you? <laughs> She swallowed her words as, if they were about,、uh, as they were about to come up. Come on, it's okay to tell me, isn't it? <laughs> I clicked my tongue. You're just full of secrets, aren't you? <laughs> Not that he's one to talk. Usami still looked rather calm. Somehow, this felt ridiculous. Gonzo ordered me to search for Mao, but the key, Usami, won't tell me anything. Angry? I'm just telling it like it is, you know? What are you talking about? こんなことを言うと喧嘩になってしまいそうで怖いんですがね。アザイさんのお人柄はどうにもつかめません。I'm mysterious? あなたは学園ではひょうきんで明るくて友達思いです。<笑>今日椿にタクシーを手配してあげたりもしましたね。けれど、身の代金を引き渡す当日には用事があると言って姿を消しました。今日もそうです。協力してくれると言ったのに。I could feel my anger building up. As I said, I'm busy. I have my reasons. I can't do anything about it, okay? <laughs> She smuggled through it with pretty words. Perhaps you still suspect that I'm Mao? I meant to say it out of spite. Usami <laughs> silently shook her head. Sure. She left the room timidly, hunched over. Maybe I shouldn't get involved any deeper with Usami. I reclined on the sofa, alone. Could Mao be targeting Usami? Whatever the case, it's got nothing to do with me. It seems like it'll be hard to get any information about Mao out of her. But Gonzo's really going to come down on me if I don't make some progress towards finding Mao. Damn it. And it looks like Mao doesn't plan to let Tsubaki's brother go either. If he doesn't, the shit's going to hit the fan real fast. Even the most mild mannered family would call the police. Once the police get involved, the fact that I took part in the loans would be exposed, and the Soa Alliance would probably be investigated thoroughly. God only knows what Gonzo would do to me if that happened. I came to a conclusion. 
I need to continue to watch Tsubaki's family. It's difficult for me to get involved in their family decisions as an outsider, but I have to try. A headache sprang out of nowhere as I continued to think. It's been happening quite frequently recently. I need to finish work as soon as possible. Uh, I paid a visit to Su uh, Tsubaki's house after finishing work. Sorry for coming over so late. I was in the neighborhood, so I came to check up on you guys. Tsubaki's eyes widened as she looked at me in surprise. Are you going somewhere? Tsubaki mumbled as she gripped her coat's hem. So, is your mother doing okay? Was it stress? How about you, Tsubaki? Are you feeling okay? It might be the dim light, but Tsubaki's face looked de uh, in desperate need of rest. You're amazing, Tsubaki. I really felt that from the bottom of my heart. Her brother had been kidnapped, the ransom had been taken, and the hostage still had yet to return. The fact that she could still smile was really something. You're a strong person. Tsubaki shook her head, insisting that it wasn't true. Sure. The house was lifeless. All the kids had probably gone to sleep. There was only her dad in the living room, laying his head on the table in misery. He let loose a greeting with worn eyes. Sorry for the late hour, sir. In stark contrast to Tsubaki's, his eyes looked weak. <clears throat> his face was gaunt. You look really tired. Although that would be quite natural under these circumstances. Maybe Tsubaki was the abnormal one. Huh? She just went to the room there, didn't she? He's probably been depressed the whole time. An awkward silence filled the air. Tsubaki's father spoke softly. Huh? Yeah, I know. <clears throat> yeah, I can imagine. Tsubaki's dad sighed. He almost seemed to be talking to himself. No, Tsubaki's just truly a kind person. Unbelievably kind. By the way, did the kidnapper ever call you back? I changed the topic as Tsubaki returned from the other room. The kidnapper. I see. Has Hiroaki already been killed? Her bright voice didn't quite fit the fit into the atmosphere. It was as if she was somehow sure of it. It doesn't come as a shock that his train of thought would eventually reach that conclusion. Tsubaki stopped her father from picking up the phone. Crap. Sorry, 
でも今更すまっ父さんはもうじっとしていられないんだ He stood up in a rush Looks like he's finally at the end of his rope Please don't become too impulsive Subaki's father turned red and glared at me I kept silent about,、uh, about this up until now But the truth is, I asked my father to,、uh, to help search for the kidnapper the day after the ransom was taken. Tsubaki held her breath. We're currently searching for Hiroaki through the police,、uh, police acquaintance of my father's. All lies. The possibility of the kidnapper hiding in a remote condemned site is very high. The investigation is currently in progress. Lies, but I decided to mix in some facts for good measure. Tsubaki. 警察の方はもう動いているということかい Yeah, but not in an official investigation. それは本当なんだろうね。にわかには信じがたいよ。It's true. Some old colleagues of my dad and a few private detectives are working on it as we speak. Tsubaki's dad fell silent. Right now, patiently waiting for an outcome would be better, a better solution than irritating the kidnapper by calling the police. I'll bring Hiroaki back, I swear. I said this firmly. Tsubaki spoke to her father as well, but his grim face didn't seem to relax at all. It seems like his judgment's lagging under extreme fatigue. Finally, Tsubaki's dad dro、uh, silently dropped his head. Apparently, he believed my bullshit. Maybe he didn't have the strength remaining to call the police in the first place. <sighs> anyway, I managed to jump this hurdle. But a lie's still a lie. It will only help buy you some time. If Hiroaki is still alive, we'll have to find him as soon as possible. I can't blame him. I took a look at my watch, and it was already after 12. Well, it's time for me to head home. I didn't have anything in mind when I stopped by. I hinted to Tsubaki. Call me if you're planning to call the police, okay? Tsubaki's con、uh, complete trust in me brought a swift reply. Yeah, he's a little on edge right now. No problem. I avoided her eyes and put on my coat. Well, good night. She smiled. You can do it, Tsubaki. Tsubaki's smile didn't seem quite satisfied as I turned to leave. Sure enough, the voice from behind me spoke up again. Hmm? <laughs> You're the last girl I would expect to hear that from. I teased her with the same cheerful voice as I always used at school. But Tsubaki didn't understand that it was a joke. Ah, as her father had said, Tsubaki pretends to be cheerful, but is actually quite uneasy on the inside. Finally, I've been waiting to see the human side of you. Oh, nothing. It would be too much to expect anyone to remain completely normal in the face of this situation. I'll pass on spending the night. We have school tomorrow. I patted Tsubaki's shoulder lightly. She looked at me like a pitiful little puppy. Her round eyes seemed to glow in the night sky. Call me if something happens. <laughs> She looked at me, her eyes filled with loneliness. Is that so? It's very convenient, you know? Let's go buy one together when all this ends. Yeah, 
Hmm? Yeah, alright. I thought Tsubaki looked a touch anxious for a second, but it's probably not a big deal. Of course not. Well, see ya. I left Tsubaki's house. I looked back when I made a turn, and Tsubaki waved at me. To tell the truth, I found it pretty adorable that she watched me walk away. Alright. And that is going to... <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> Throw Kevin out right there. That is going to be where we... Uh, Eiji, I'm trying to do an outro here. That is going to be where we end today's episode. I hope you guys are enjoying it. I know I am. And so, stick around for the next episode. And I will see you all next time.